This video is filmed using Lumix S52 and the X52X. Please enjoy. So I've been wanting to make this video for a few years now, and it kind of just kept getting away from me. And the other day I realized I don't seek after any tripods anymore. I haven't thought about, oh man, I really wish I had a tripod that filled this role. I wish I had a tripod for, for this time. Um, no, I've pretty much found every tripod through lots of trial and error, might I add, um, that works for me in my life. Now, just before we get started, there is no perfect tripod. There is the perfect tripod, perhaps for you, or the perfect tripod for a situation, but no just straight up perfect tripod, though I've gotten pretty close. Throughout the last five years, I've spent thousands of dollars on tripods, some of which were just like garbage and I hated and I either returned or sold and others that were genuinely helpful and are still with me in my kit today. But I will say I've pretty much narrowed it down to just a few. And since I have this list down, these are the ones that kind of survived and the ones that I find that I'm always going to have some sort of use for or I just like to have around in case the situation arises. Um, they vary in price point. There's nothing crazy expensive on here in the $1,000 range. There are $1,000 tripods, though I will say. Um, none of which are appealing to me. Tripods, just like other sorts of gear, definitely have diminishing returns. Now, all the tripods I'm gonna have on this list do have a purpose. They also um, have different price points. So whether you're just starting out, you don't have much money and you just need something to get the job done that's gonna be good enough, or you want to spend a little more on a tripod, I've kind of found what I feel to be the best ones at different price points. Now, while there are some really like Lamborghini, Mercedes levels of tripods out there at the like $1,000 to $10,000 range, none of those will be on this list. Um, I don't think anything on this list goes over 500, possibly doesn't go over 400, but we'll have some price points at around four and less, and we'll have some around 200 and less and some options even as low as $50 on this list. But anyway, let's start off this list with my favorite. It's the flash tripod I bought and it was honestly the tripod that made me realize I don't think I need any more. It filled one role that I didn't have a tripod specifically for but really wanted one and it does that so well, it's so light and that is the Ulanzi and Coleman F38. This tripod is heavily inspired by the Peak Design tripods, if you're familiar with those. They have an aluminum one that's sitting around 350, I want to say, and then another one that's carbon fiber, which I always kind of wanted, but it was 650 and I just couldn't bear to purchase it at that price. I've gotten to try them out in person, and while I do actually love the design of that tripod a lot, the legs are in this triangular shape, which while folded up does make it really compact and sleek, but unfortunately triangle legs in harsh weather conditions aren't as sturdy as round legs. And while this Ulanzi tripod doesn't look necessarily as sleek as that one, it is incredibly lightweight and incredibly functional. All of the little gears and clamps are super smooth. It has a very, very, very good size height. I would say almost around like six feet when fully extended with the additional arm. They have a link so you can put your bag so you can anchor it and have more weight if you're filming somewhere that's a little windier and your gear is not enough to hold it down. The tripod itself uses this proprietary though really amazing interlocking system with the hot shoe. It has the ability to lock into place very easily. It'll lock in and then you can actually pull out that pin and switch it up and lock it so you don't accidentally bump it. Um, it really seems like Yulanzi thought of everything when they made this tripod. There's hardly any room for improvement that I can see on it. Everything on this tripod is super smooth. The clamps on the legs all undo really easily and the tripod just of itself, you can just kind of like push it and the legs just fall out really smoothly. It has a level built on it so you can see if you're level without having to use any in-camera software. It is super, super lightweight. I'll put the weight somewhere here as I don't have it memorized. And then it also has a really, really, really enticing price. Just because of the weight, stability, and usability of this tripod, it's become kind of my go-to. It comes with me more than any other thing on this list. I do not have an affiliate link for this one at all. Yulanzi didn't pay me to say any of this. Um, no one on this list paid me to say any of this. Some I'll have affiliate links for if you wanna help me out, buy them through there. For the Yulanzi tripod, however, I do not have a link. And so I'll put a link in the description to the tripod. You can buy it. I make nothing off of it, but I just 
that goes to speak of how much I like this tripod. Coming in at number two is my workhorse video tripod. So there are tons of different tripods, some specifically for photo and some that aid a little more help towards video. This is definitely gonna be one of the video ones. It's not at all light or easy to carry or anything like that. It is a giant. However, you see this giant tripod head at the top. Um, this is kind of the beautiful part about this. In fact, the sticks, while they are really good sticks and they are very sturdy and adds a good amount of weight, which makes me very comfortable using this on sets where it's gonna be bumped into and knocked around, this is my go-to for video production. Um, it's so big, cameras actually look quite silly on it if you don't have them rigged out in a cage and everything like that. But the special sauce of this tripod is this top part. You can actually buy this top part separately. I think the top part runs maybe about 250. You can find it for maybe 280 used on its own and attach it to tripods that you have laying around. You can just replace the heads of these. However, if you want the whole entire setup, it tends to be around like 390, maybe like 420. Um, I find this to be just the best value. This is about where you can spend a lot of money and you'll see the most kind of results for the cash that you've spent. While I've seen really nice thousand dollar tripods, they seem to only be like, you know, 10%, maybe 15% better than this one. But that first $420 towards this tripod gets you like 90% of the way there. It has these beautiful red rings around it and on the sides of it that have basically what's called a drag system. This isn't something you'd necessarily care about for um, photo, but for video, whenever you're trying to like film something, like let's say it's a sporting event or some kind of event where people are kind of moving around, you want really smooth pans, really smooth tilts. This is what this is for. You can adjust the weight based on the camera system at the top. You can adjust this handle so it's somewhere comfortable that you would like it. And it just, you just feel like it's gliding. It's, it's great. It's the smoothest thing I've ever used. And even if I don't do these corporate video shoots anymore where I was panning a lot for these events, um, I just, I can't part with this. Just because the second I need it, it's, it's too good. I'd recommend this if you do wedding videography, if you're doing any kind of like graduations or ceremonies um, for corporate events, stuff like that or if you're filming any type of sporting events and you're on the sidelines in kind of one spot and you're kind of just running back and forth, you can pick this up, run, lay it down, and just follow so smoothly. The shots are just, ah. Now let's get to knock it out for the two most expensive tripods on this list. Those are definitely my two favorite as far as like working professional tripods. The first one, the Manfrotto one, great if you're hiking. They do make a version that's a little cheaper and a little heavier that's like all aluminum if you're not gonna be hiking and you just want that kind of form factor and the, the fluidity of how that tripod works, but you don't want necessarily the carbon fiber, you don't need to pay extra to have the weight taken off. You can definitely buy that aluminum one. I like the weight taken off. My back's killing me over five years of holding these cameras, and so getting rid of weight is top notch for me. However, if you're on the video side, go with that Manfrotto O55, or at least get the video head to attach to some really good sticks you have laying around right now. Next one on this list is gonna be on the more affordable side, and that is the Manfrotto Pixie. Um, I have the extreme version, which I don't know what makes it extreme outside of it has this little blue graphic on the side. I love this thing. This is really great if you're using like a smaller camera, possibly like a Fuji film with like a smaller lens or a Canon M50, probably some setups with the FX30, like if you have a Sony. This is great if you're just trying to like vlog yourself or if you just need a place to set up time lapses or set up quick little long exposures. It just fits in your back pocket. Um, also, if you haven't gotten a real camera and you're just trying to use the camera that's on your phone, this is also really great for that. They make little attachments so you can put your phone on here. Great for TikTok, great for any kind of vertical video, stuff like that. I think you find these for like 40, maybe 60 bucks and they sometimes get bundled with the little phone holder. It's so small and takes up no space. It's always either in my back pocket or just like sitting in a different side of my bag. Uh, can't recommend this one enough if you're just starting out. Now next on our list is actually gonna be two at one time. And this kind of falls in line as like the upgraded version of that Manfrotto Pixie. And that is going to be the Joby Gorilla Pod, which I have here, does not have the top of it, and the Switch Pod. Both of these run roughly about a hundred bucks. Um, the Joby Pod is famously known as kind of that vlogger, Casey Neistat popularized just 
kind of bendy tripod. Um, the beautiful thing about this is you can bend it and you can attach it to different railings and branches and trees and kind of get a higher tripod if you have the stuff around you to be able to modify it. I will say I used this for a really long time. This always kind of came with me. Um, over the years though, I've kind of gotten just sick of these things wearing out and then also just having to like keep it level on a table. And it's, it's almost like, not quite like balancing a gimbal, but anytime you put a new lens, like it could be front heavy and start going down this way. And then you have to kind of find different ways. And that's where the switch pod comes in. Um, it's a little heavier than the Joby pod, um, though that could be a little bit of my doing. It typically doesn't come looking just like this. It doesn't have this little top head part, but it's really thin. It can fit in like the smallest little pockets on the side of bags. And then you can just flip it out like this and all of a sudden you've got a perfectly level tripod. Now it doesn't have the versatility of hooking onto things like this one does, um, but just the ability to like pop it out, place it down and you're good to go. I did modify this as when you buy this straight out of the bag, um, this costs about $100. There's really just this here and you can kind of screw in either a phone holder or you can screw in like your camera and that's all good and well. But anytime you want to take off your camera, you're stuck using this thing at the bottom. And so what I did is kind of like merge these two together. I took the little lightweight head off of the Joby Gorilla Pod. So now it's on top of here. And so now I can angle the switch pod so if I just want to throw the switch pod out but I'd rather have it pointing a little bit up I can just loosen it here so I can turn it loosen this and and yeah I've got the best of both worlds this way um, kind of a little bit of overkill you can definitely just you don't have to buy both of these to combine them you can definitely just buy the switch pod if you like that setup and buy you probably a smaller even more lightweight photo plate for the top I just didn't want to spend any extra money and had this laying around I was like I'm just gonna use these two together and so that left me with this i will say this is probably my third most used tripod it's a hundred bucks it's not that expensive and while it may not give me the height i always want um, sometimes when i'm shooting landscapes i like wide angles from a kind of ground perspective and this gives me that along with it being just kind of lightweight it's easy to take with me so there's not much of a of a penalty if I'm taking this with me. It's not adding a bunch of weight. If I don't end up using it, it's not the end of the world. And now for the last tripod on this list, I want another tripod that kind of fell in line with like giving you more height if you're kind of starting off on that more professional photography journey, or if you're just wanting a, you know, more than these kind of ground levels that these will provide. And so I reached out to KNF Concept. Um, they're a company that I've always kind of like liked. They don't make anything that's like crazy top tier, super expensive. Everything they make is kind of like middle of the road, lower middle. Um, however, at the beginning of my photography and video career, I bought so much KNF concept stuff. Um, like their ND filters, their tripods. Like I used to just try out a lot of their stuff because it was pretty affordable. Like you could find a lot of these things for like maybe 18 to like 30 bucks. And so I reached out to them for this video to see if they would provide a tripod kind of in that $60, $50 category. And they sent over this, which I've been using for the last month. The worst name ever. Um, the KNF Concept, and there's just basically just a model number on it. K234A. Oh, I'll have a link to it in the bottom. Um, essentially, it comes with a little bag. It folds up really, really small. Like this is pretty good size. And these basically flip up and lock. And that net begins the start of the tripod that's going to get much higher. It has this bar, which can actually be raised and lowered. These are all in three different brackets. And it's really not that heavy. I'll uh, throw the weight on the screen right here. It is made of aluminum for the bars. So you're gonna have nice sturdy legs. And then you kind of have, um, it does seem to be on the cheaper end of plastics for everything else. But the nice thing about that is, it is very lightweight because of that. I would say probably my least favorite thing about it is the tripod head, as the uh, the head is seems to be of made of a like pretty sturdy plastic, but the tripod plate is also plastic, which if it's dense, that's not going to be too much of a problem. I would just prefer for it to be metal and prefer for the teeth of this to be metal. I don't think it would have been too much to ask just to have that little area done, just because. You know, over time I could see that if you happen to be switching lots of different tripod plates, uh, the metal ones will slowly mess up this plastic. And so I would probably say if you're going to be using this tripod, uh, use the plastic plate with the plastic grips. It's sturdy enough, it's, it's good. It's just if either one of these was metal or plastic, so if you use a plastic 
tripod head, it's going to tear up the plastic on the teeth that hold it together, which it's not going to be great. I'll leave a link for this one in the description. This one's going to be really good for you if you're just starting out and you don't have a lot of money to spend. You've already spent lots of money on the camera and the lens and now you just kind of need something to set it on. This is the way to go. I'll leave a link in the description to this exact tripod. They will have a couple of upgrades as well. So if you don't want to go with the bare bones one, that's like 54 bucks. You can also go to the one that's a slight upgrade. That one's going to have more of the tubular legs and you're actually gonna be able to get a monopod out of that one as well, which is what I have right here, actually. I had a additional fluid head from a Manfrotto 255, which almost made this list, but the video fluid head only goes up and down. It doesn't go left and right. However, this was great for this kind of monopod setup. So if you decide to upgrade this tripod right here, you'll end up getting the ones that are made of a little higher quality materials. They run about 80 or 90, and you'll be able to get this monopod out of it as well. Um, as this is one of the legs to one of those upgrades. And a monopod is really used for if you're going to be moving around a lot during an event, you know, just moving around a lot in general, and you're going to be using like kind of a heavier lens or a heavier setup, you can put your setup on here, put your lens taped on right to here, have this fully extend out to the height that you want. And then instead of you having to like hold it with your back and your arms all day, you can kind of just plant it in the ground like this and just film as you go. So yeah, um, this video has been like six years in the making, just trial and error of trying different tripods from all sorts of brands. And these are my top picks as of 2023. If you like any of the tripods you've seen in this video, use the links down below to purchase them. Um, some of those will be affiliate links, some of them are not, but they're all tripods I recommend and purchasing through those links does help out my channel a bit. Anyway, thanks for sticking around. That'll be it for this video. Hit the like button if you liked, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.